Well, welcome to today's program. I'm Dr. Cindy Trim, and today we're going to discover the missing key to turning your life around. It's been said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Many of us talk about change, but we don't. So we want to give you some principles today that can really bring the changes you've been looking for. When we begin to understand that we are what we do and say in life, and we're simply doing it on a continuous basis until our present actually becomes our future. You've got to make some choices. You've got to make some decisions. And we do it every single day. Here's the thing. If you fail to make a decision, it's a decision not to make a decision. And you're making a decision anyway. We don't have to uh, look for success and expect it to happen by default. Instead, we can define and we can design our future. And you've heard me right. If you keep making the same decisions in your marriage, in your careers, in your health, in your finances, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have the same outcome. You might be thinking, well, Dr. Cindy Trim, that sounds like my life. Exactly. And maybe you feel you've been in this struggle with the same issues going around and around the same mountain. You need to know right now that you were created for something more and you're destined by God to live a fruitful life. Well, here's the good news. Today, we're going to give you some principles to do just that. You are not ordained to live a life that struggles and in difficulties, but if you want to see a change in your life, we can change the words we speak. Stay tuned. started on our teaching today. I'm going to give you a few seconds to call your BFF and say, Dr. Cindy is getting ready to teach. Get your notepad out and your pen. You're going to want to take notes. In the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, very interesting text. I believe that this is a text that shows us how to move actually into new realms of dominion. You would not believe where dominion actually starts. It's not just living in a realm, but it's doing something with the very thing that we take for granted, and that is the power of the spoken word. Now, in this particular text, here is Jesus walking on the water. The disciples are shaking and fearful, and he just stands in the middle of the same storm that's threatening to destroy them. The wind is just hammering. The winds are hammering, and they're afraid. And here comes Jesus with a swagger, of course, walking on the water. And then he says, guys, it's I. And then he turns, and he addresses the winds, and he addresses the waves, and he says, peace be still. He he took dominion over the situation by controlling two things, controlling his emotions and controlling his words. Now, when we talk about these wins, these, these are uh, the theories and philosophies that become the traditions of man. It's Colossians uh, 2 and 8 that says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceits after the traditions of man, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Very important scripture. Why? Because when God created you and I, he created you and I in his image and after his likeness to represent him in the earth realm. God is not only a spirit being, he's a speaking being. If you look at Genesis chapter one, he just speaks to circumstances and situations. Scripture says he was the one that calleth things that be not as though they were. One of the things that I found out and the mistake that I made in my life back in the day, I kept talking about the things that I didn't want. I don't want to be poor. I don't want this. I don't want that. Talking about and decreeing what you don't want doesn't bring to you what you want. And this is why many of us uh, are caught in these kinds of storms. We have health storms, financial storms, relational storms. Maybe some of what is going on is not happening to us. Could it be that it may be self-fulfilled prophecy? Dr. Trim, what are you saying? 
I'm saying that scripture is saying that words determine our destiny for true. It says life and death is in the power of the tongue. He that loves it shall eat the, the fruit thereof. One of the things that I've discovered is this, that by just carefully looking and interpreting a situation and claiming that situation as your reality, it becomes your reality. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So your reality of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, negatively or positively impacts the reality that manifests in your life. Now, one of the things that I want you to do is to understand it is not what is happening to you that causes the conditions in your life to be what they are. It is your response, your reaction to what is happening to you. Here is uh, two uh, scenarios playing uh, in the same kind of realm. Jesus is experiencing the storm, the wind, just like the disciples. And so now you have, here's the disciples saying, we're going to die, we're going to die. And here is Jesus saying, listen, peace be still. I love it because that word peace is translated silence yourself and put a muzzle on it. Do you not know that everything in this world is voice activated and there are voices that are always speaking to us. If you have negative voices, if you have negative things that is going on around you, you can speak the same thing. Peace, be still, be silent, put a muzzle on it. The key question that is found in our text is found in verse 41. What manner of man is this? This is the response that they had of Jesus. Jesus was demonstrating for his disciples what it looked like to walk in, the, in dominion. And this is what I want to share with you in our next segment. Stay tuned. Join Dr. Cindy Trim for these next live appearances. Let's talk about this word dominion. It sounds like it's a big word and none of us can operate. But when we usually think of dominion, we usually think of someone with a whip, someone with authority, and we big chief and you little Indian. But no, that's not what dominion is about. Dominion is the right to rule. It's wired in each one of us. We are born to have dominion, not over everyone, but over specific realms and regions. In Genesis chapter one, verse 26 and 28, God looks at himself and says, let us make man, talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that is. And he looks and says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, follow the air over everything that is created except man. So it's not uh, uh, speaking of you having dominion over people, but you having dominion over things. It used to be a time that we love people and uh, use things. Now things are being reversed. We use people and we love things, but the original intent and purpose of man was not that. We were to have control over the things that were going on in the earth realm. The earth was created and then God placed man to exercise his dominion. Dominion is the right to rule. When Adam fell, he didn't fall from heaven. He fall, fe fell from a realm of dominion. Let me just break that down a little bit more. When you think of uh, powerful people, you think of people, I think of a person like Oprah, she can just stand up and say, hey, I read this book and boom, within seconds or minutes, that book becomes a bestseller. Why? Not just because she has influence, but because she lives in the realm of influence. Let's talk about faith. Faith is not just saving faith or a law of faith or the gift of faith or uh, a dimension of faith. You can actually live in the realm of faith. This is why Hebrews 11 is written. Not just people that understood the law of faith, but they actually lived in the realm of faith. Let's talk about success. 
Donald Trump, for instance. Um, he's very, very successful, not because he does successful things, but everything that he does is a success. Why? Because of the realm that he lives in. Now, realm is a spiritual dimension. We are spiritual beings. We are more than just physical beings. Scripture says that we should walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So this brings me right back to the word dominion, living in the realm of dominion. When Adam fell, he fell from the realm of dominion. He fell into a realm that operated by information, it operated by facts, and he fell from a realm that actually operated by faith and revelation. So once you move into the realm of dominion, the facts won't matter, and this is why when we talk about uh, decreeing and declaring, you are not declaring and decreeing from a realm that victimizes you. It, you're decreeing and declaring from a realm that gives you the right to take control over your situation. You will take personal power or take your personal power back from that realm. Now, one of the things that Peter said, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, just love it. He said, we are called to partake of the divine nature. What is the divine nature? God is not only a spirit being, he's not only a creative being, he is a speaking being. And governing your words is the proof that you are participating in the divine nature. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, we see God exercise his dominion. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. Things were not looking like he wanted them to look. It was just topsy-turvy. The Bible said there was no vision. There was no insight. There was darkness, no revelation. There was just utter confusion. God steps into the middle of it. He didn't say, ah, oh, look what the devil has done. He didn't cry over it. But what he did was he used the power of the spoken word and he took dominion over his situation. And this is what happens when we begin to decree and declare, calling those things that be not as though they were, the things that you want brought back into alignment. I can go on and on how declarations have changed my life. I was born in poverty. I begin to decree and declare the scriptures that says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I want it to be, I want to prosper. And and one of the things that God said to Joshua that really impacted my life, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Therein you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So success and prosperity is, is connected to your thoughts as well as your words. Negative thoughts bring about negative results. Negative words bring about negative results. Positive words, healthy words, successful words, prosperous words will do exactly that. It will bring health, it will bring happiness, it will bring success, and it will bring prosperity. Check this scripture out. Here's Jesus now teaching his disciples how to exercise dominion. And he walks into a city, he looks at this bush, and he says, die. And then he keeps going. And a day later, the disciples come back and they say, oh my goodness, guess what? This bush, this, this tree or whatever it was, I think it was a bush, they said it has dried up at the root. Now, this is very important. When you begin to decree and declare over your life, you may not see immediate results, but keep on decreeing and declaring. Why? Because it takes a little while for the fruit to know that the root has died. So just because the leaves on the tree is still green, it does not mean that that root has not been destroyed. We are going to get to the root of the problem by teaching you how to take dominion, exercise your right by welding your words, using it like a sword, a, a sumerai uses a sword. The Bible says that we should use the, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Let's just cut some of these negative things down so that the positive can blossom. Stay tuned.
So welcome back. You might have the question that's in your mind, because I know it was in my mind when I first heard this word, dominion. What does that mean? What does dominion mean? Dominion actually has to do with the exercising of your rights. When you have dominion, you're exercising your right. Remember, dominion does not refer to you ruling over persons, but things. Hebrews chapter 10, 23 gives us a hint of where we can start. So the first way of exercising dominion, according to Hebrews 10, 23, is to hold fast to the profession of your faith. What it simply means is that word profession comes from a Greek word homo logeo, homo, the same, logeo, words, say the same words. Now, this, uh, God is so good because he takes all the guesswork out of then if I'm going to hold fast to my words, what words are you talking about? We're talking about the scriptures. All the promises of God. If you want success, find all the success scriptures. If you want prosperity, find the prosperity scriptures. If you want to decree that your children will be successful, find scriptures that talk about children. And so you're going to hold fast to the profession of your faith. Take in dominion. Starts with your speech, and then your speech, making sure that your words are lined up with God's words. Don't begin to decree over your life the problem, decree the solution. Don't decree what you see, decree what you want. And then make sure that what you are saying is aligning with what you want to see. If you don't expect to see it in your future, just don't talk about it in your presence. Because again, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and he that loves it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you wanna see it in the future, begin to decree it and declare it in your presence. The next way is after you deal with the whole issue of holding fast to the profession of your faith so that you can ensure that the results that you end up with or the consequences that you end up with are the consequences that you want. Hebrews 4 and 2 gives us the next secret or the next way or the next tool or the next strategy. Make sure that your words are mixed with faith. So having your words line up with scriptures, but the Bible says clearly profession or confession of faith. Now, this word is important. Why is that word important? Because you can't just think that if you decree things that you don't believe in, this is not gonna happen, that that is gonna come to pass because there's some incongruency. How do I build my faith then? You start building your faith by not only decreeing that word, but meditating on that word. What is occupying your thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you get up in the morning, command your morning, I decree, I declare, then throughout the whole day, do you worry, do you fret, do you still talk about the things that you don't wanna see? Here's a caveat that I wanna give to you, and it's a very important caveat. And, 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 and I learned this from my own personal life. When I begin to decree and declare, if I heard something negative, say for instance, if someone decides that they're gonna gossip about you and you hear the gossip, do you run, pick up the telephone, call all your BFFs, your best friends, and do you start saying, okay, this is what I heard so-and-so say about me, and do you repeat it over and over again? Here's, here's one of the things that I do. I take Philippians 4 and 8, whatsoever things are lovely and just, and whatsoever things are praiseworthy, if there be any virtue. I take that particular scripture. There are eight specific uh, characteristics of, of the things that I should ingest into my mind and repeat. And I say, if it doesn't, if it's not true, if it's not honest, if it's not lovely, if it's not praiseworthy, if it's not a good report, if it's not those eight things, if they don't qualify for all eight areas, I don't meditate on it and I'm not gonna speak about it. Now, let me break this down just a little bit further so you can understand what I'm saying. What if a person is gossiping about you and it hurts you deeply? 
You pick up the telephone, you call your mother, you call your best friend, you call um, your neighbor, and everybody that you run into, you say, this is what so-and-so says. Do you not know that what you're doing is decreeing and declaring what that person said, and you are giving that thing permission to exist in your life? Now, is it true that they gossip? Of course. But do you want to then ingest that so that that becomes a part of your declarations? You might say, well, Dr. Trim, I didn't talk about it, but what if you went home and you meditated all night? Why did she say that? And it goes on in your mind over and over and over again. Eventually, it's going to affect the quality of your thoughts, and the quality of your thoughts is going to affect the quality of your life. And so even things that are spoken, gossip, if it's not true, what if it's true and they're gossiping? Well, is, is it lovely? Is it just? Is it honorable? If it's praiseworthy, if it is not, do not allow that thing to come out of your mouth. Do you not know this is the hardest thing because we want to talk. We want to talk. We need to get it off of our chest. But sometimes if you speak everything that's on your mind, you, you, you sometimes you just got to bite your tongue, refrain from speaking it, and then start ingesting that same word so that the word displaces the things that we or you have typically been meditating on uh, day and night. Here is another caveat that I want you to understand. It's not just the words that other people are speaking about you or saying about you. It's the words that you are speaking over your own life. You can reverse even negative words by displacing it with positive words. I'll give you an example. When I was young, about 17, I thought 40 was old. And I began to say, oh, I don't want to be old and 40. I think I want to die before I get 40. Guess what happened? When I was about 38, somewhere thereabout, you know I'm 21 in my mind. But when I was somewhere about 38 years old, all of a sudden my body started breaking down. Just unexplainable things. I went to the doctor. I was so weak. They couldn't find anything wrong with me. And do you not know that I had to go back home and I said, you know, I don't want to die. I was diagnosed with a hernia hernia. Then my blood count started to drop for no apparent reason. And when I went home, I was feeling weak, and I began to pray. And the Holy Spirit said, Cindy, when you were, you were young in your teens, you said you didn't want to be 40. And your body took that as a mandate. Do you not know how powerful you are? Every word that you speak, the universe receives that as a mandate, as a command. This is why God said to Job, just don't sit there. Say something. Have you commanded your morning since the beginning of your days? You got to change. Here's the next thing. Number three, this is not just verbal. You've got to be able to change your internal dialogue so that you could change your destiny. You've got to alter or change your internal dialogue in order to alter your destiny. If you don't like where you are, don't just sit there say something. The scripture says, let the weak say I'm strong. And I want to throw it in. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the depressed say I'm happy. Let the downhearted say I'm strong. Let those that feel victimized say I am victorious. You've got to be able, and here's number four, use a series of I statements. It's not just about what people are saying about you. What are you saying about your life? Here's what Jesus said. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the resurrection and life. You know, and that's exactly what he became. What are you decreeing and declaring over your life? Use a series of I statements. I am successful. Don't say I'm a failure. I am successful. I am strong. I am powerful. I am happy. I am blessed. I am, I am, I am. Don't allow the hurtful words and actions of others to define your life. It's time to put an end to negative self-talk and reverse the curse you're living under. It's time for you to declare yourself blessed. 
You don't have to live under a cloud of doubt, defeat, and despair any longer. Everything you need to take control of your life, change the course of your destiny, and experience peace in your home, promotion in your career, and unlock your highest potential is available to you today from Dr. Cindy Trim. You can change your life right now by following the footsteps of Jesus, entering into the realm of authority that God has called you to. Dr. Cindy will show you how to use your words to take your home, your business, and your thinking to the next level. I declared that health and prosperity were mine, and I began to see my life take a new form, and today I'm a stronger man, I'm a better man, because of the words that Dr. Trim empowered us to speak over our lives. Break free from the patterns of negative thinking holding you back and discover true success when you learn to declare yourself healed and blessed. I've assembled a special teaching to help you. It contains everything you're gonna to need to know to kickstart the process of changing your thinking. And it's going to lead to a happier home, a happier life, a more successful business. And it starts right now. Tap into the wisdom you need and put these principles to work for you today. Begin thinking greater, speaking greater, and living greater. Accelerate towards your ultimate God-given destiny and purpose with the powerful Declare system. Your first step begins with Declare Yourself Blessed. These prophetic words will stir up the fullness of God's blessing already on your life for abundant manifestation. You don't have to wait another day. Activate the living word, agree with Dr. Trim in this message, and declare yourself blessed. Next, discover how to declare yourself healed. Speaking out declarations from the Word of God, Dr. Trim prays anointed words over your life, releasing the power of God for healing in every area. God wants you to live without pain, experiencing optimum peace and health. Take authority over your health and receive your healing starting today. Last but not least, learn to declare your home and business blessed. Tap into God's success strategy to effectively overcome every challenge. Lift the restrictions from your life by removing the barriers that have held you captive so your home and business can experience exponential growth and success in the marketplace. The entire Declare system is yours with your gift of $35, but that's not all. When you call today, you'll also get today's complete broadcast message on DVD as a free bonus. That's the entire Declare collection, including Declare Yourself Blessed, Declare Yourself Healed, and Declare Your Home and Business Blessed for only $35. Plus, you'll get today's message on DVD absolutely free. It gives you that support. It gives you tools. It gives you strategies so that you can be the best that you can be in what it is that you have been called to do. Take your first step to a better tomorrow when you call right now. Order today and let Dr. Cindy lead you into a life that is blessed. I want to invite you to tune in with us next week. We're going to learn how to release God's healing power in your life. Call a friend, call your loved ones, and especially those that right now need healing. We are going to show you how to release God's power next week. God bless you. Yeah.